What's good, YouTube? It's Gabriel. Just another fan TV. Back after another video. Like the content of this video, go hit that like button. Like the content of this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe, man. We're here, training camp Eve. That's what I'm calling it. Right before the training camp is getting started, the Ravens are back in the building for the most part. And um, it's time to get rolling. So I want to do two things in this video. I want to give some Ravens news, right? Some things have happened since, you know, we last spoke. And also, I want to do five things that I'm going to wish for my Ravens wish list. Like, you know, going with that Christmas theme. Five things I'm going with that Ravens wish list for this for this training camp that I want to see, right? All right. So let's start with the first piece of news. The Ravens signed a player. We talked about they created cap space in the last video. This is one of the first moves for that cap space. They, they signed Corey Clement. Now, this isn't really a big, big move in my opinion. Corey Clement is a solid running back. He's he's played for the Eagles. He's played for the Cowboys, I know for sure. I believe he's played for other teams as well. Um, he's a solid running back. He has NFL game experience, but to me, this is a camp body move. Now, J.K. and Gus obviously have opened the uh, training camp period on the active pup list. So, what are the Ravens doing? Instead of having being short at running back, you get another running back in. He can take those blows in training camp, whatever you need be. And now, J.K. and Gus will take their time to heal up. So, where does that lead the Ravens right now? They have seven running backs, but we're going to subtract J.K. and Gus. So, that's five on the roster right now. Mike Davis, Tyler Beatty, Justice Hill, Nate McCray, and now Corey Clement. All right? Um, like I said, this is camp body move. I still think that I wouldn't be surprised if Corey Clement doesn't make the roster, you know? But he may be a guy down the line that, you know, if the Ravens do suffer injury running back, they can call him back because he's, now he's been with the team the whole training camp, and he's going to know more to play but than a regular free agent. All right. Next piece of news. Michael Pierce. He's here. He's in the building. We haven't seen Michael Pierce at all for this entire offensive program. Um, he has some uh, personal matters, some family issues that was going on. Um, hopefully that's all resolved now because we know family before football. So hopefully that's resolved and he's ready to go because we're going to need Michael Pierce, right? Brandon Williams is no longer on this team. So we're missing a guy whose primary duty is to run as a run stuffer. Now, Michael Pierce is also a little bit more versatile, okay? Um, I remember listening to him, to him on, on a lounge podcast he was saying that when he went to Minnesota, he stepped up his pass rush game. I believe he had about three sacks with the Minnesota Vikings last year. So if that's true, great. He can he can stuff the run and give um, a little bit of pass rush as well. All the better. All right. Next piece of news. Gus Edwards. Gus Edwards is questionable for week one. Now, I haven't really seen a game status um, this far out before. You know, we're talking about, you know, a month and a half out. But... It should be no surprise. Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins have late ACL injuries. We're talking about third game of the preseason for J.K. Dobbins. We're talking about right before we're about to go play the Raiders for Gus Edwards. You know, I think it might have been one of the last couple practices before we, before we go play the Raiders week one last year. So it's not surprising. Uh, I think ACLs are somewhere it can range from somebody to be on the fast side. It'd be six months. Somebody could be on the uh, uh, on the slower side, maybe more regular recovery and be a whole year. So we're... We're heading towards that year mark for Gus and J.K., right? Uh, we're not there yet, but we're heading towards that. So, Ravens have learned. Bring these guys along slow. There's no need to rush. I would rather have J.K. and Gus in week four ready to roll than in week one and have a Ronnie Stanley re-injury type, type situation. Okay? Um, Now, Ravens rookie tight end Charlie Kohler, he has a sports hernia. Uh, he And I believe that he's going to need surgery, and he's going to miss part of training camp. Not ideal for a rookie. You know, you want to have that training camp experience, have that have that time really get to put in with the vets. Uh, but get this injury resolved now instead of having it get worse and worse over time. Get knocked out now. Um, I saw a report, I believe it was Jonah Schaefer, said that Charlie Kohler had a sports hernia injury in college as well in 2020. So maybe this is a re-aggravation that wasn't dealt with before or a complete re-injury. I'm not 100% sure. But he's dealt with this before, so he should know how to recover from it. All right? Last piece of news, um, David Ojabo, is, it's a holdout, officially. Um, he hasn't signed with the Ravens yet, um, I guess. So with these rookie contracts, it's not more about negotiating more money, but different guarantees, different way that the contract is structured to where the player can have you know, a chance to get more money, out, not more money out the deal, but get their maximum return out the deal, right? Um, different incentives and things like that. So that's what's going on with David Ojabo. He's not part of the Ravens right now. He hasn't officially signed. Uh, but when he does, I'm sure it'll be, it won't be too far out. 
he's injured. He wasn't practicing anyway, so it's not like the biggest deal in the world. You would love to have him in the building right now, but it's not the biggest deal in the world. I'm not gonna make, I'm not gonna blow it up to um, epic proportions, right? Um, you would like to see him in the building as a rookie, but it is what it is. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do to make sure you can get as much money as you can out of this game. All right. So now my my wish list, right on my on my Christmas theme, right? What is my Ravens training camp wish list? Here we go. So number one, it's gonna be the one thing that's off the field, right? Lamar Jackson's contract. Okay, we're gonna make it quick. I promise. Um, him and the Ravens are gonna be face to face for the next six weeks, locked in. Let's talk. Let's get this, let's get this contract ironed out. Now Lamar could say, "Hey, look, I've, I've waited. I've made." Almost $10 million by waiting because last year if he would have signed, he probably would have got 40 uh, or 41. Now he's closer to 48, 50, right? He could wait longer if he wanted to. He really could. But if I was the Raiders, I would be pressing. He's in, He's here. He's in my face. It's no more, well, we can't reach Lamar. He's not talking to us. He's here. Press him. See, what, see what's happening. See what he wants to do. And see if you can get that deal done, right? See if you can put um, lockdown that security for the Ravens franchise, all right? If he doesn't do it, it's no big deal, but that's something that I would like to see. All right, two, health, health, and more health. And I've already talked about Charlie Cola's injury, I know. But besides that, let's hope, I'm hoping for a healthy training camp, right? You want to be physical, you want to be fast, you want to be competitive. But most importantly, let's get through this period healthy so, so that we can face the other teams at 100%, right? Let's not get, hope. I don't want to see no more 60% version of the Ravens that we saw last year. Probably even less than that, okay? Number three. Um, the famed wide receiver position. I need one of Tylen Wallace, Devin Duvernay, or James Prochet to significantly break out during this camp period. And I mean, I need somebody to dominate in practice. It's just practice, I know. And also, if you play in the preseason games, I need you to, I need to see it. We need to see it. We, the Ravens need to know who that number two guy is going to be next to Rashad Bateman. And it's important for these guys to snatch this opportunity. I'm telling you right now, if we get to the second, third week of uh, training camp, excuse me, and the Ravens don't feel like nobody is breaking out, they're going to sign a veteran. It's, it's just what's going to happen. They might sign a veteran regardless, but especially if one of these three guys don't show significant improvement and show that they're here to make plays in the long run, you know? Now, James Poche has a little bit of a reputation as a practice warrior. Let's keep it up. I need to see that. Because now, now it matters. Before when you were doing it, you know, you were the six-round pick. You wasn't going to play. There was veterans in front of you. Now the chance is here for you to play. So if you're going to make those plays you make before, it's time to make them now. All right? So that was number three on the list. Number four, um, the players on the pup list, I would love to see them return to action at some point during training camp. No rush, but just at some point, even if it's the last week of training camp, to see those guys come back. So... The guys I'm talking about, I'm not talking about Ty's Bowser because that Achilles injury happened so late last year. Um, if he came back, great, but I feel like that would be a rush. He gets keen go on the reserve pub list and miss the first six weeks of the season if that's what it has to happen. And then, obviously, Ojabo, who tore his Achilles um, his last, um, sorry, during his pro day in March, right? Um, now, Ojabo obviously not part of the team, so I already went through that. But those two guys, I'm not counting. Guys that I'm looking for to come off the pub list. Marcus Peters, J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, uh, Ronnie Stanley. If those guys can come off the pup list free and clear, I feel really good about where we're going this upcoming season. I really do. Um, uh, so another guy who's on the pup list is Darius Washington. I hope that he comes off for his sake because he's going to need to fight for reps. I mean, the Ravens are deep, deep at safety. So... You know, he, he could be he could be a cut just because he hasn't been able to be seen on the field, right? Uh, the Ravens are talented. They can't really hold a roster spot for a guy who's not playing. Um, but Marcus Peters, J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, Ronnie Stanley, those four guys I would love to see come off the pup list um, during training camp and even get some practices in during training camp just to show that they're ready and getting ramped up, okay? Now, just that's, that's just a wish list kind of thing. doesn't have to happen, but, you know, we, we wishing, right? All right. Uh, fifth and final thing, Patrick Queen. I want to hear that Patrick Queen is evolving in pass coverage and his linebacker play overall because uh, this is a big year for Patrick Queen. It's no more young player. You This is year three. You're a vet. Now, during the uh, OTA period, 
There was some uh, reports about him having he was looking better in pass coverage, more confident. I believe he might have tipped the pass, or even caught an interception during one of those one of those periods. That's awesome. That's what we need to see from Patrick Queen. He needs to be a guy where he can make the plays and also take the responsibility of getting lined up and maybe even call out the plays wearing that green dot on his helmet, right? Um, so that's what I want to see from Patrick Queen, taking that next step overall. The Ravens have a history of linebackers. We don't have to go over it. We know it, right? It's what the Ravens do. Um, so Patrick Queen, I want you to be one of those guys next in line to continue that legacy. You're a good, fast, young player, but you have the potential to be a great young player. So that's what I want to see from Patrick Queen. Um, so those, and that was number five. So those are my five things on the training camp wish list for this upcoming uh, upcoming training camp period. Excuse me. Y'all tell me below what is on your wish list for this training camp. What do you want to see? What do you want to hear? It's your boy Gabriel, just another fan TV. I'm out.